Welcome to the next edition of Coach Parry Auto Suggest. Today, we're going to be answering some of the world's most asked questions when it comes to running hot. Question number one has got to do with what is a good heart rate by age? Well, Brad, there isn't one. Essentially, heart rate is relative to a person, and so it is not necessarily going to be specific to say that at this age, X is your heart rate or that Y should be your heart rate. It's going to differ person to person. As we get older, our heart rate max will decrease as well. And so that is definitely how it becomes a lot more relative to the person. And of course, all of this is dependent on your age, your gender, ethnicity, and tons of other factors. And so we can't just give a simple answer as to what the correct heart rate is. Now that we know that, let's take a look at the next question. And that is, what is the best running heart rate monitor? The best running heart rate monitor is probably the one that you've got at hand. But beyond that, you have two different types now to choose from. We have the optical sensors that go in your wrist and the chest strap heart rate monitors. There are many brands available and it's probably much for much as which one you choose. So choose the brand that you use that is most popular to you. It might even be that your watch had a monitor in the box and you use what you need to do. The things you need to consider though when you've got whatever you've chosen is you need to think about the fit um, and the accuracy. So the fit is important because if you've got a chest strap, things like chafe happen and if it's not sized properly, it might start up and down during your run and you're gonna be spending a lot of time trying to adjust it and it's gonna affect you and it's going to be very, very annoying for you when you're on the run. And the accuracy is very, very important because heart rate means nothing if you can't get a consistent reading. If you are seeing spikes or troughs in your daily reading, whether it's coming from your sensor, from your wrist-based sensor or from the chest strap, that is not a good monitor to have and you must think about getting something different. And then the last thing to consider is battery life. You don't want to be changing the battery too often and you don't want the battery to die on you when you're on a run. So you want a, a device that is going to last a very long time and that you don't have to worry about changing the battery very frequently. These things are also often um, water resistant and if you fiddle with, uh, with the sensor too much, changing the batteries, you might affect the water resistance of the device. And then after that, there are new features now available. Every manufacturer has their own sort of um, value added on features that can make the experience better. But those things, that I mentioned earlier to consider are the most important things before you think about getting more advanced features. Thank you very much in Tutu, now that we know that. Uh, let's take a look at the next question. And that is, why is my heart rate so high while I'm running? Take it away, Dev. Great question, Brad. We actually get this quite a lot in the forum. So why is your heart rate relative to you high on a particular running day? This can be multiple factors and often things that we need to really dig deeper and unpack maybe a little bit more on the day. But there are multiple things that affect heart rate. Weather conditions in particular, today is an extremely hot day here where we're standing. And if I had to go out on a run now, my heart rate is going to be elevated. We know around the world, there's been heat waves, summers in the Northern Hemisphere recently have been absolutely through the roof. Those are all going to have effects on your heart rate and it's important to then know how to adjust your training on feel rather than just going according to heart rate. The same would apply for what you might have taken in in the morning. So if for example you had a cup of coffee before your run which you don't normally do that could spike your heart rate slightly and you will see an elevated heart rate in that particular run. Another reason would potentially be a sign of you getting sick. So one of those sort of early signs, we often look at things like resting heart rate that also give us an indication on getting sick, so an elevated resting heart rate. The same would apply for a training session. If you're seeing your heart rate higher in a particular training session, weather's in optimal conditions, you haven't had caffeine before, yet your heart rate is sitting higher, it might be worth just taking it a little bit easier today, seeing how you feel in the next day or two, and just monitor your health. Another potential reason for a higher heart rate on a particular run is the terrain you're running on. Something we don't often factor in. If you are used to running a particular route, you know your route is flat, and now someone's invited you out for a run and you might be doing a bit of a trail run or a little bit more of a technical or undulating course. As a result, on a different surface, you might be forced to put in more effort. And because of that, your heart rate will be slightly elevated. It is then again important to try and think of perceived effort and know on your usual route, that might be a tarred surface, it might be a flat route, you know what your heart rate is, you know what that perceived effort is, 
come down and run at the same perceived effort, even if it means your pace might be a little bit slower than what you are used to. All right, on to the next question. Now that you know why your heart rate is so high while running, let's take a look at how to reduce your heart rate while running. There are two ways to improve heart rate while we are running. One is to peg the speed that you are running at, and over time running at that speed, your heart will become more efficient, stroke volume will increase, heart rate will reduce, and over time, your heart rate will come down at that speed. The second way is to control for heart rate. And over time, your speed will first decrease, and then as heart rate becomes more efficient, your heart rate will also start to decrease over time, and your running speed at those low heart rates will start to increase. The second way is the way that I like to control for intensity and to improve heart rate. Although pegging speed does over time improve your heart rate, it's a much higher risk for developing an injury because it doesn't allow you to train for where you are now. It's assuming for where you want to be in the future and that can cause excessive stress on joints, tendons, ligaments and muscles and lead to both fatigue and injury or illness over time. And so to control for where you are now, it is much better to use heart rate and make sure that you are running at the right intensity for where you are right now for your fitness and then to watch yourself improve over time at a much lower risk for overuse injury. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, and this has got to do with running heart rate zones. Super interesting question. One that we get asked a lot here at coachparry.com and it's off to London to Nikki. Ah, heart rate zones, right. Okay, broadly speaking, we use five heart rate zones. There are different ones out there and they're slightly different, but for our purposes, we're going to use five zones. And I'm gonna go through those five zones generally here. So starting with zone one, this is the easiest level and is often referred to as active recovery. So it could be brisk walking, it could be very, very light running, but you won't break a sweat doing this. In terms of recovery runs, you're looking at between anywhere between 20 to 45 minutes, nice and easy. When you come into zone two, this is the key zone for endurance runners. This is where runners, we as runners doing endurance events want to spend most of our time and it's termed the aerobic zone. And this is what develops our base for endurance running. Here you can hold a robust conversation, perhaps produce a light sweat. We will likely finish with a little bit of energy left over and you could have probably carried on running. Most of your training is carried out in this zone, zone two. The next three zones are your higher intensity zones. Zone three is an intensity that we could generally hold for 30 to 40 minutes full out. This is known as your threshold tempo zone and intervals are normally about three minutes plus long. So zone three are generally longer reps. In zone four and five, these are often lumped together Zone four is between one to three minutes in length and zone five, which can be known, often referred to as the VO2 max or max effort, is reps often less than one minute. For us as endurance runners, we wanna hang out in zone two and do some work in zone three as well. And those are the really beneficial zones for us. Watch this video next where we share five super simple hacks that you can employ right now today to keep your heart rate low while running.